Hey y'all, it's Stephen Van Camp and Lewis on a somewhat chilly morning here in um, South Central Texas. It's about 50 degrees right now, so that's uh, in my world, that's chilly enough for kind of a thick sweater. And I know you uh, Northerners are probably laughing, laughing at me right now. Uh, and as a former Northerner, I can tell you that your blood gets th pretty thin living here in the Southern part of the United States. Uh, that said, we have had chilly nights, and one of those chilly nights uh, got down to below freezing. And so I, I've been kind of running a couple of experiments on this Dendrobium speciosum. Uh, I've heard a lot of things that it, it loves the heat and the cold and full sun. Uh, I noticed that this summer, though, during our brutal heat, even under 50% shade cloth, it was still getting some sunburn on the leaves, so I didn't want to push it and try and get it out into full sun at that time of year. But I figured I'd try it in the cooler months so that it only has to deal with bright sun and not bright sun and crazy hot temperatures. Uh, I have to say that it is not as sun tolerant as I thought and uh, all of the older leaves were really, really getting sunburned. So, um, so I, I was able to rule that idea off. But what was interesting was the new growth uh, was actually coming out and the, the new leaves were not being sunburned. So they were they were acclimating to the higher light levels whereas the older existing leaves were, were unable to do so. But uh, I've also heard that it has incredible cold tolerance. And uh, I want to point out that uh, A, it, it doesn't really have as cold tolerant uh, qualities as I thought it would. And B, um, you know, there's a difference between cold tolerant and surviving and cold tolerant and living. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean in a second. And we had some, uh, we had our first decent freeze uh, probably a week ago. So that would put it in early December. Uh, it was forecast to be a couple degrees above freezing. So I wanted to leave it outside uh, to see how it was and not bring it inside. Uh, the Dendrobium speciosum actually did not do that well. Temperatures dipped below freezing, which was unexpected. And for you gardeners out there, it was cold enough to kill off my tomato and some sunflowers, but it wasn't cold enough to hurt the, the cold, hardy crops like the brassicas and carrots and onions and stuff. So it, was, it probably dipped below freezing just by a couple of degrees. But that was enough to nuke all of the leaves and one of the two new growths. So let me turn the camera around and show you what I mean. So you can see some peppers that I'm overwintering and... Uh, I shouldn't get this blue bonnet and this Aristolochia on the ground today, and then I have a bunch of my milkweeds over here. But this, this is the sad, sad Dendrobium speciosum. And so I want to point out a couple things. First, you can see the, the large spots, the large dark spots, I should say. Those are from where the uh, sunburn happened. Uh, this past couple of months, so probably uh, November-ish, and those are the older leaves. And then this newest growth here, the leaves got very soft and squishy. And you can see that, that that's classic cold burn, and then that actually killed off the rest of these leaves. And also interesting is that this new growth here got hit pretty hard, and it has been kind of floppy. Oh yeah, it's still you can still see it moving. So I think this new growth is probably toast, but the more mature new growth here, at the tip of my thumb there, uh, seems to be doing just fine. So the, the leaves are certainly nuked, uh, the, um, but the bulb is just fine. So I really didn't want to test it quite this much, but you know sometimes you just need to experiment with your plants and test their limits. And if that means that you get some burnt leaves, or in this case, a lot of burnt leaves with a combination of sunburn and frost burn, you know, it helps you kind of figure out what your plant tolerances are. So this one has been outside. This is the last of my orchids that stayed outside, and it's, it's not doing so great. So I've put the plant down so that I can kind of move it around a little bit and show you with a, a little more ease at least. So this is that super new growth, and you can see how floppy it is. I, I really, and there's some, some liquid oozing out the bottom. I, I don't think it's going to survive. But the older growth, that's more mature, did okay. 
So again, you can see how dark green these leaves are. These, you know, the chlorophyll in here is all dead. The leaf is toast. So what I'm going to do is actually now come through and, and clean this up, cut the leaves off of this one, we'll cut these these dead leaves off, and then I guess just leave these older but still green leaves on. Also of interest is I wouldn't have wanted to do this at this stage if I had a choice or if I if I thought this was going to happen because I've got um, bloom not spikes but uh, sheaths here that would have bloomed probably this spring and I'm kind of bummed that I may or may not get to see that happen so we'll we'll see how it goes uh, but anyway that just uh, this really just emphasizes the fact that you know doing a little experimentation with your plants really helps helps you to understand what they're doing how they grow and how not to treat them and finally you can see that I've cleaned the plant up here there's still a lot of uh, green material left on this thing even though you can see some sunburns and yet excuse me some cold burns on the other side of these leaves the tops are fine so they'll, they'll still be able to photosynthesize but if an experiment of yours does go horribly wrong as you see here you you really do want to clean up the leaves a, a little bit uh, mostly as a preventative to preclude fungus or bacteria or other types of rot getting in um, if you've ever seen cold damaged plants the the, the leaves or, or parts that are affected usually get really squishy and then they often get affected by various pathogens uh, that can kind of tear through the rest of the plant so so you got to keep an eye on it you probably want to cut off some of the more affected parts uh, I left this new growth on as uh, I'm just kind of curious to see what it does but I'm going to keep an eye on it uh, as it and you can see there's I don't know if you can see that bubble there on the bottom just next to my finger a healthy happy plant does not ooze sap out like that so it's it's probably dying here and I'm actually the the liquid is down in there so I think I'm actually going to cut this off. I was going to leave this off but now that I'm talking to y'all and um, kind of poking around I, I think I'll cut this off and uh, and hopefully it'll grow again. These are incredibly tough plants so I suspect this will rebound and it wouldn't surprise me if it blooms in the spring. It also wouldn't surprise me if it doesn't bloom but we'll see. Um, Finally, I guess I didn't show you what type of speciosum it was. It's uh, it's Curvicali by a clone called Windermere. So Curvicali is a variety. There's a bunch of different varieties or even subspecies in Australia where this one's native to. And then Windermere is the name of a clone that was probably awarded or, or just very, very happy. Um, very nice one that, that received a name. Anyway, I'll talk to, talk to you all later. Bye.